In last week's episode, we talked to you about the history and evolution of the Polaris Scrambler. And this week, we'll go deeper into the new 55-inch wide Polaris Sportsman and Scrambler 1000S. So project engineering, uh, what that entails is project management. So really what I'm responsible for is ensuring that every system engineer, every um, essentially design aspect, every scheduled target is communicated, it's known, um, we're tracking together cohesively. Uh, it's kind of more of a collaborative approach. Most engineers, the stereotype is we don't talk to each other and we definitely don't know how to talk to other people. So part of that is to bring the group together, kind of unite in, in what that vision's going to be and execute it as a team. Actually, I came on just after there was some of that initial thought process of what those 1000S models might look like, what those might be. The early stages of that design, I was not a part of. However, coming onto it, just getting a feel from the individuals on that initial creation helped me actually get a good foothold with the overall vision of what we wanted that machine to be. So it, it was my understanding at that time that we wanted you know, a powerful machine that really caught the consumer's eye. It was different. It might've looked the same as you know, what we see today with the, with the body plastic but there was just something about it that really made it stick out. And it wasn't just the suspension. It, it really made you take kind of hyper-focused look at it and, and just kind of do a double take. We started this new platform without the constraints of the width and wheelbase of a traditional ATV due to the fact that there's many more side-by-sides on the trail and the trails are open for this size of vehicle. So the idea was to build something that was so much better with so much more travel, 14 inches of travel in the rear, 14 and a half inches of ground clearance, that there was nothing like it on the market. It's basically, the goal was to build the ultimate ATV without the limitations of the traditional size of an ATV. What we've done at Polaris as a whole is we've always tried to find these spots that nobody's playing in and where can we move into and get a loyal customer and keep that customer for life. To us, if you've got a sportsman or a scrambler, what can we do to keep you happy and bring you back to the brand? Programs are super expensive to do, so you gotta leverage as much as you can, and those are two very distinctive brands. The Scrambler guy recognizes himself some of the differences of the Sportsman guy in usage and probably character. So if I can take that same basic package and really do two segments off of it, I increase my volume, and I think there's, there's opportunity there that there's two different people, you know? Even from a showroom standpoint, I mean, not all dealers stock both products. If you just did it as a scrambler, some people might never see it or they recognize it, ooh, it's a sports machine and I really need something with racks. I need to work some of the time, but you know, you can still play pretty good on the sports one we've got today. Some of the other competitors, they, they're nipping at us all the time and you have to do that in order to keep ahead. But everybody's making a good product right now, so where do you go to keep ahead of those guys and keep the customer like, ooh, those guys at Polaris are always thinking different. When I first came to Polaris in Canada, we had like an 86 Polaris Trail Boss and nobody knew what it was. It was like, well, this is a snowmobile on wheels. What is that thing? So you look at where we were then. We were not cool. Polaris was not a cool brand. Now you get Razor, we're kind of cool. Now you're starting to look at ATVs like, I would ride that thing in the desert, you know? Again, go back to the press thing. We're, like, we're riding ATVs? Yeah. We're riding Sportsman? Yeah. You know, it's not just a work thing. You can actually have a lot of fun in this and like, it is a high performance vehicle out in the desert. Again, try to move the brand into something different or expand the brand into something different. It's not just work vehicles, it's like something fun, super exciting. The thing that's really frustrating lately since side-by-sides have become such a big deal is the tracks are so wide. If you try to drive a modern 48-inch ATV on trails that side-by-sides are on, which is almost all of them now, you're, you're like this all the time. You're always leaned over. The 55-inch width, even though it's not quite out there with side-by-side, it straddles those the track so much better. So you got that aspect of it. Plus more travel, the 1,000cc engine, um, you can go over 80 miles an hour and, and those big tires, you can hang with anybody and you can pass pretty much any side-by-side -side out there. So it's, it's just a really fun vehicle to ride. I think once people start riding it, I think this is really gonna take off. I think it's gonna become the norm for ATVs. So I definitely expect some competition to be coming. As long as we stay in front of them, I don't care. <laughs> The passion behind this project was huge, and that comes from a dedicated engineering team at Polaris who don't just wanna make a product good, they wanna make it better in every way, but that doesn't come without its challenges. There are a lot of challenges with making the, an ATV wider, longer, and more travel. It sounds like it's pretty simple to do, you know, just put some longer A-arms on it and call it done. 
but there's many problems that come with that. This is in no particular order, but one thing was now you're going through more travel, bump steer becomes a big issue. And with all ATVs, that's a challenge because you have a center steering post and then you still have to, especially four wheel drive ATVs, you have to have room for the front drive. And that ends up making your tie rods way longer than your control arms. And that gives you a bunch of bump steer and bump steers as you go through travel, the wheels are turning, right? So we brought back something from the Predator days, the pro steering, which is the, we have the linkage steering in that system that completely eliminates the bump steer on the Sportsman S. So that was one challenge. Just because we made it wider, we, we still didn't clear anything because we went and then put way bigger tires on it. So clearances to headlights and plastic and, and all that stuff is always a challenge to add more travel and put bigger tires on it. You're just, you're running into more things. So there was definitely some, some things we had to do to the plastic. And that's part of the reason too, why Sportsman and Scrambler have different front suspension travels because they have different plastics. And we got the most travel we could out of the clearances we had. Then a big thing is anytime you give a chassis more capability, you know, when you add more travel, you give it bigger tires, now you can go faster over everything and that greatly increases the load. So if we wouldn't have completely reinforced that chassis, we would have ripped it apart. If you just put this suspension onto a Sportsman XP, it wouldn't make it. We had to beef up the frame, we had to beef up the control arms, we had to beef up the steering. Everything had to get bigger to be able to handle going 80 miles an hour through some of the nastiest terrain you've ever seen. So previous to this project, I work on the ACE projects where we ended up with ACE with the 900XC was very similar in size and capability of the 55 inch Sportsman and Scrambler. That project though had an overstructure, that vehicle had an overstructure which changed the loading into the chassis. Where in a traditional ATV, you can only have so big of a, of a structure in the middle because you have to sit on top of it. So that introduced a bunch more challenges as far as handling the loading of the vehicle. While there were hills to climb, Polaris Engineering were able to see this project through to fruition and bring an ATV to market that is second to none. But the people at Polaris are no dummies. They know that competition is never far behind. You have to be constantly wargaming where you think those guys are gonna go. We're the leader and, and they're gonna follow us into these segments. Where do we think they're gonna go and then wh where do we move that you know we can take advantage of that? We've got size and we have volume now and we don't wanna slow down, so we gotta keep going fast and, and how do we stay ahead of those? So I, I would say we're constantly wargaming all the competition. At the 55 inch width, I think there will be other players coming into that market. I think it just took someone to start. Nobody else did it. All these ATVs are similar width. Wheelbases vary between one up and two up vehicles, but they're all the same width, basically 45 to 50 inches wide. And now that we've done this and we've showed it and we've worked with state governments to get this vehicle classified and trail legal in most of the states, I think others will follow. The ATV marketplace is not dead, and Polaris is dedicated to this new 55-inch chassis and its current configuration of Sportsman and Scrambler 1000S, but quite possibly into a whole lot more as well. Gonna lead the pack, it's gonna be out there, like I mentioned, and um, to actually see it next to a side-by-side, -side, and whether that be out in the desert or on the trails, I mean, this thing can really rip. So. Uh, I'm really excited to see where it goes, especially in the race scene. Um, I think there might be an opportunity there. It is really going to be a significant difference. I think you could look at all kinds of spaces where the extra width could help us out if we expand it. From a financial standpoint, strictly, you want to leverage that chassis to go in lots of different areas. But yeah, we, got, we have all kinds of things cooking to, to expand on the whole business in general. We're not done with ATV at all. Thanks for watching Dirt Tracks TV. If you like the video that you just saw, click the like button and also comment below. If you haven't subscribed to our page, you can do that as well. And ring the bell if you want notifications of future updates to Dirt Tracks on YouTube. Click any of the links on the screen to take you to more Dirt Tracks content. And most importantly, make sure you get out and ride.